So we're here at Lenovo Center. I'm here with Russ Resnick, and we've got a special guest today, Stormy. Hey, Stormy, how you doing? Yep, so we're gonna be talking about the, the Think System SR630 V4. It's a pretty good server, right? Yeah, excellent. Hello again, my name is David Watts from Lenovo Press, and I have with me today Russ Resnick. Russ is the Worldwide Segment Manager for Thick System Servers. How are you doing, Russ? Great, how are you, David? I'm very good. And today we are filming from a special location. Russ, where are we? So, David, we're in the Lenovo Center here in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is a preeminent sports and entertainment complex, and it's home to the NHL Carolina Hurricanes and the North Carolina State University basketball teams. Which, which is why we're wearing exactly the right. Hurricane sweatshirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you got for us today, David? All right, so Russ, we are going to be going through the new Think System SR630 V4. This is our one new two socket server that's based on the new Intel Xeon 6 processors. Um, there's the server supports either the the new Xeon 6 with P core or E cores or the E core right. systems, yeah, mm -hmm. E core processors. Yeah. yeah, yep. So we're going to go through the through the server. We're going to start at the front, and we're going to look at the back, and then we're going to look through all the different components. And back. then we'll talk yeah. a little bit about the firmware and the management system. Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now I would say the um, there are a number of new features to the server. If you're familiar with the V3 servers, um, the new Think System V4s have got new features um, such as the uh, support for E3.S drives up at the front. Six, up to 16 in the yep. front. And yeah. isn't in, in mm -hmm. the server, yeah. Yeah, um, we're also supporting new memory technologies, um, mem MR DIMMs for high performance, and new CXL memory, which goes in the E3.S drive base at the front. That's right. Yep. We're also supporting um, new hot swap M.2 drives. They can be installed either at the front or at the rear of the server. Or internally. Yeah, or we, yes, we still continue to offer mm -hmm. the internal M.2 as That's well. That's right. Yeah. And there's a couple of new uh, uh, water cooling options that this server has. We're going to go through those in a moment too. All right. Right. All right. So at the front of the server, the usual drive base at the front, this particular configuration ha has support for eight, uh, sorry, 10, two and a half inch hot swap drives, um, NVMe, SAS SATA, or, or any bay, uh, usual things. Um, in fact, we, we talked about hot swap M.2. If you're going to have hot swap M.2 with the two and a half, then that would be eight two and a half inch drive bays. That's right. And the two and M.2s. Two M .2s. So, Russ, what are the M.2 drives used for? Why Typically, the M.2 drives are used for boot, for the OS boot. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, the advantage of them being at the front or the back? It allows customers a hot swap if need be. Right. So that's Since they are redundant, server. they are rated. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Just for, for reducing downtime of the server, basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the server also supports the E3.S form factor, E3.S 1T for storage, or 2T for the new the CXL, CXL memory. Mm -hmm. um, and you set up 16 of, of the, those. Of the 1Ts. Yeah. 16 of the 1Ts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's certainly an option um, for this new server as well. Now, as well as at the front of the server, um, it's got uh, the uh, usual uh, LEDs and buttons at the front there, um, two buttons for power and, and for the ID function uh, for remote identification. Um, there's also a, the, below those I, um, is a uh, remote management, sorry, that's the remote, sorry, it's the, the uh, diagnostics handset yes, port. Yes, the remote there diagnostic handset yes. port. Mm -hmm. handset port, that's, that's right below there. Now, optionally, the server supports at the front of the server um, two USB 3 uh, connectors and the uh, mini display port, video port for local management if you, if you want to have those. That's right. Those are optional features. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also there's a, a pullout uh, uh, um, information panel there on the production systems that will have the, the, the um, MAC address and IP address, the network information for the remote management port that's at the back of the server. That's right. Yeah. So that's what's at the front of the server. Let's spin this around and have a look at the back. So like our previous servers, um, the server supports up to three PCI slots. Um, these are all PCI Gen 5. That's right. With the new Xeon 6 processors. So we're, we've now moved on to, G, to Gen 5 across, across the board here. Um, now this server with the V4s, we now support two OCP adapters. That's right. right. We have yeah. two OCP adapters yeah, one, plus the three one, slots. Right. So that's a total of five networking connectors, it's networking slots at the rear of the server. In addition, as I will show you when we get to it, there's also a space at the front 
for an internal RAID controller. That's right. Um, alongside the M.2. We'll get to that in a moment. So, yes, there's a lot of, a lot of storage expansion. Uh, uh, I.O. expansion. expansion yeah. I.O. expansion mm -hmm. in this server. Um, the server supports three GPUs, for example. That's right. Um, including the NVIDIA L4 GPUs. So if you're looking for a server that, that has um, um, uh, that's you know, suitable for an AI workload. This would be a, would be a great choice to, to add to your to your environment. Yeah. Now, as well as that, two hot swap power supplies um, will go into these bays here. Um, of course, we because you can see we have imaginary um, invisible power supplies right. in this system, but the production system, of course, will have have real ones. We have a variety of of oh. capacities, wattages, a variety yes. of wattages, yeah. and you would configure the, the the ones you need based on. The components that are installed, and, and in the, the supplies are the CRPS form factor. Right, right, yep. A new, a new industry format, yeah. Yes. Well, not so new, perhaps new to us. Yes. Yeah. Yes, new CRPS form factor. Yeah. Okay, so that's the the rear. Um, in terms of the connectors at the back, um, there's a VGA port there um, for for again for local video. Um, two USB three connectors, um, and there is an Ethernet port there, which is a remote management port. Um, to do management of the server um, via the network. Now, Russ, this server actually supports um, a second RJ port. Yes, RJ45 we, port. we have an OCP adapter that allows the customer to add a redundant management port to the server in, in, for those customers who want to have redundant management networks. We also have a, a management port consolidation adapter. Right, that yes, the four to one support. consolidation. Yes, yes. yes. Um, and so that will allow um, a customer who who wants to to reduce the number of of switch ports used for management. They can actually use a single switch port to route to one server, and then use this four to one consolidation adapter to, to route, route those to three, to others. three other servers. Right. So, you so get basically a, four to one. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so we have options for customers who want redundant management, mm -hmm. and we have customers who want to have a minimized management system. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's the that's the back of the server. Let's uh, spin that and look look through the internals, mm -hmm. right. So the main stuff, of course, is the, the processors. This is the new um, Intel Xeon 6. This is actually the 6700E um, or, or P. P. Yes. Or the 6500P series um, processors are all supported by this system. Um, two of those, this particular model only has one processor installed. Uh, the second one would go just here, of course. Yes. And there are 32 DIMM slots. That's right. So that's up to a maximum of eight terabytes of memory if you want to install it um, with the maximum possible. That's right. Um, now, the, the server supports RDIMMs, 3DSR DIMMs, like normal, but we also support new memory types. Right. So we support the new MR, uh, the new MR DIMM high yep. performance memory for those customers who really want higher, uh, higher memory bandwidth. Right. Up, up to 8,000 megahertz, the, yes. these DIMMs now mm -hmm. go to, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and as well as that, um, if you need additional memory beyond that, there is also support for CXL memory, and those go in the front bays, in the E3.S bays at the front of the server. So that's for additional memory beyond if, if your workload requires that. So those, again, are more flexible choices for you in terms of the memory subsystem. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so that's memory and, and process. Now, this particular server has got one processor using a performance heatsink. So this is an air-cooled uh, performance heat sink. You can see the satellite uh, radiator that's, that's just there. This is just one of several water, uh, uh, cooling methods that's in right. the system, right? Mm -hmm. um, we also support closed loop liquid cooling. So this is a, uh, a design where the, there is a large radiator here in front of the fans, and, and, then, and, and that routes the, uh, a closed loop through the processors. Right, with uh, redundant pumps, so a yep. uh, pump on each processor. Right, yep. Mm -hmm. And that's basically the, um, just removes the heat from the processors and distributes it across all of the fans and to, to uh, improve the, the cooling capabilities. Right, the so it improves the configurability of the system by making the thermal, so by having a much more efficient thermal solution. Right, right. Now, so that's a closed loop liquid mm -hmm. cooling. We also support two now, two choices for open loop water cooling. So with open loop water cooling, we have um, you would have water infrastructure outside the server in your data center, and and there would be hoses that would be fed through. I think it's through slot two. That's right, um, right here. And hoses would feed in, and one of the choices is that it actually the water would be used to remove the heat from the process. Just the process. Yes. So right. so the 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 design is hoses that would go through the through the processes mm -hmm. uh, over cold plates on top of the processor. That's right. Um, and that would then remove the heat 
through lit through water out through into your coolant distribution unit. That's right. Yeah. Now, as well as that, we now offer a compute complex uh, uh, offering, a part of a Neptune Core, um, our cooling uh, offerings, and Neptune Core. Uh, sorry, the compute complex cooling um, allows allows us to remove the heat from all of the major compute components. So that's the processors, yes. the memory, and the voltage regulator. Right. So there's a uh, right uh, a water uh, cold plate for these. Right. Yes. So the, so the so the <clears throat> the cooling mechanism removes the uh, the heat from all three of these components, and that relates to about about eighty percent. Right. Mm -hmm. Eighty percent of the heat produced by the server can now be uh, removed using liquid cooling. That's right. So that's a substantial amount of 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 heat redu uh, heat reduction. In fact, so much so that for most configurations, you can now use slower, um, quieter uh, fans that don't have to operate as fast. So it's lower noise and lower energy consumption by the fan. So and, it and you may also be able to reduce the number of fans that the system in, needs. In, yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yes. So basically, there is, the use of water is a substantial energy savings mm -hmm. that's worth doing for large installations. That's right. Yeah, so th this server now has a variety of, of, of cooling choices, including the open loop cooling. Yeah. So what else have we got here? Um, we talked about the, the, the processor subsystem. Um, these are the, the fans we just mentioned here. Uh, the server supports up to eight of the, of, of the uh, air cool fans. Um, these are um, hot swap rotor redundant fans, N plus one rotor redundancy. Um, they're installed in pairs, so each of these is a is a is a module um, that contains two 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 of the fans just for ease ease of of, of use. Uh, again, a hot swap component uh, supported in, in the event of, of a of a failure to replace one uh, while the system is still running. So that's that's the cooling uh, air, air cooling capabilities of the system. Now, as well as that, for systems management, yes, we have the new. XCC3, X Clarity Controller 3. That's right. Now, what, what's that all about? So the X Clarity Controller 3 is now based on open source firmware. So we use Open BMC for the, uh, for the management firmware, yep. and we use Open EDK for the UEFI firmware. And, and what's, the, what's the advantage of, of using those for, well, for these? these yeah, David. So by using open source code, uh, we know that others in the industry have tested and validated the code for both function and security, and we're, we don't have to rely on uh, proprietary firmware. Yeah, okay. So basically, it's, it, it improves the overall security position of the server. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Now, in addition to that, there are some physical security at, at rich. Um, there's a, a lockable front bezel that's available for the server, and there's also an optional intrusion switch as that's well. That's right. Yeah. So I think that's pretty much all of all we're going to cover on this server. Um, oh yes, yes. At the front here, um, there is support for the internal M.2 we talked about. So as an alternative to the front or rear hot swap, um, and also then there's this bay here that allows for a cabled RAID adapter. So again, if you if you want to use these uh, connectors, so these uh, slots for GPUs and your OCP for networking, you've got a, still an additional space for a RAID control for for the internal drive base. So that's another another mm -hmm. another capability of this server too. Right. So I think that's pretty much it, Russ. Um, this is the Think System SR six thirty V four. That's right. Now Russ, as I said, we're in the Lenovo Center today. That's right. Normally we would be filming this in the executive briefing center yeah. in our offices. Right. But it's closed for renovation. Right. But it'll be opening soon in the spring. So if you're interested in uh, coming in uh, Talking about our technology, meeting some of our developers, yep, uh, and uh, having a better understanding of what we're doing. Go on a tour of our labs. In fact, we have yeah. labs here in, in our offices in, in Morrisville. Yeah, yeah. Feel free to talk to your Lenovo seller about arranging such a visit once the uh, briefing center reopens. Yep, very good. All right, so there you have it, the Think System SR630 V4. Hope you found the video useful. Russ, thanks very much. Thank you. Yep, we'll see you later. Bye for now. <laughs>